This was all a long way of your saying you're a big Marianne Williamson guy. All the way. <laughs> I am all in. Okay. Big Marianne Williamson. Uh, no, I think, and I agree, and we talked about this last night, there were some moments that will come back to haunt whoever the nominee is. Kamala Harris, we should point out, raised her hand again yes. last night mm -hmm. to say she would eliminate private insurance. She did. She raised her hand. Now, afterwards, she tried to spin out of it again. She's been through this before, but she did raise her hand. Get rid of private insurance. Hundred million. Willie, can you people. can you explain what that means in real terms for parents who want their children to go to the pediatrician that they've known since their child was born? Well, there are about 180 million people with private insurance. A lot of people with employer-based insurance are happy with that. We had Bill de Blasio on yesterday saying it would be phased out over time. Other candidates explained that yesterday. I don't know how exactly long that would take. A lot of people would lose their insurance for a while. Would they be caught in the middle? This would be devastating to a lot of people, but she's on the record. She could be the nominee. She's on the record for eliminating private insurance. All those candidates on the record last night for giving insurance to illegal immigrants, people who come here, which raises the question, what's the point of the border anyway, if we just let everybody in and give insurance? So. And, and by the way, you talk about a magnet. If I'm a parent in any Central American country yep. and my child has a disease, has a condition, I'm going to try to cross the border because the second I get across the border, yeah, my child and I get health care yeah. for life. With all that said, Michael, we did ask the question yesterday for people being introduced to this group. They'll look at the stage and say, who can I see in my mind's eye standing next to Donald Trump and fighting Donald Trump? That person before last night was Joe Biden. Yeah. Last night, I think it became Kamala Harris for a lot of people. Yeah, I think you're right about that. She, she, um... <laughs> By the way, As I said I really know, I know how to drain the, the, the crowd's uh, enthusiasm, yeah, 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 don't I? Yeah. Sorry about Thank, that. Thanks for that, Joe. Thank you. Oh, yeah. uh, no, yeah. no. I think, but I think you're absolutely right because there there are two aspects to look at here, and and, and they both go to your point, Willie, about uh, who's going to go up against Donald Trump. It is no doubt. I think we all can agree now that Kamala Harris can prosecute the case. Yes. She can make the case. Yes. But what is the case she make? She's making. So if the case you're making is an immigrant who comes to this country undocumented is, has access to free health care and will not be criminal, that, that action itself will not be any longer criminalized, what are you saying? Because Donald Trump will sit there and do what he did this morning from Osaka and say, oh, they really are socialists. Mm -hmm. And so that narrative does not play well, to your point, Joe, across the country. So yes, you can prosecute the case, but it will matter what it is you're prosecuting. Mm -hmm. What is it you're saying from a policy prescription for this country on health care, on immigration, on the environment, relative to the rest of the country, not your East Coast, West Coast uh, clients or, or, or you know constituencies, but the country, the part of the country that still feels isolated, ignored on a lot of these issues. And when you're saying to, to middle America, you know, from Pennsylvania to, to Wisconsin to Michigan, that immigrants can come here and do something that you, can, you get access to something that you have a hard time getting access to. Right. Mm -hmm. That becomes a problem. By the way, the, how many million people are still uninsured in America? Exactly. And right. So, Adrian, um, I don't want to put you in a difficult position. Oh, go ahead. She can but it. but I, I think it. I think as somebody that obviously knows the Democratic Party better than any of us up here, um, what was your takeaway last night? And did you have any concerns, or do you think that maybe I'm just a right-wing Republican uh, uh, out of out of out of time? Um, well, Joe, I actually think, look, I looked on, on that stage last night and saw a lot of candidates who I think could take on Donald Trump. So that was a good thing in my mind. However, I was surprised by Joe Biden's sort of lackluster performance. I thought he was going to pivot and take on Trump more from a general election standpoint as opposed to only focusing on defending himself. He was completely on defense almost the entire evening as opposed to being on offense. So I was surprised by that. I did think Kamala Harris looked like somebody who could stand on that stage and really take on Trump. But I do have concerns, especially when it comes to some of the positions on immigration that the candidates took last night and some of the positions, of course, on Medicare for All, because as we know, Medicare for All is overwhelmingly popular when you just look at it on service, right? About 70% of Americans 
support Medicare for all, but when you get into the nitty gritty of the fact that you lose private insurance under most of these Medicare for all policies, it really started to turn a lot of Americans off. And so to the point that you just made, now you have a lot of Democrats on record saying, yeah, we want you to lose your private insurance. And oh, by the way, if you're an right. immigrant coming to America, you know, you can get the same benefits that a lot of Americans have now. So by the way, lose your private insurance, lose your doctor. By the way, illegal immigrants cross the border. They get health coverage for life and it's not even called illegal anymore. This feeds into Donald Trump and the Republican Party's open and borders him. claim, which I have Paper. been saying for the past two and a half years is a lie. So let's hear from the candidates. Here they are on undocumented immigrants and health care. A lot of you have been talking tonight about these government health care plans that you've proposed in one form or another. This is a show of hands question, and, and hold them up for a moment so people can see. Raise your hand if, gover if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. Okay. Our country is healthier when everybody is healthier. And remember, we're talking about something people are giving a given a chance to buy into. In the same way that there are undocumented immigrants in my community who pay, uh, they pay sales taxes, they pay property taxes directly or indirectly. This is not about a handout. This is an insurance program. And we do ourselves no favors by having 11 million undocumented people in our country be unable to access health care. You cannot let, as, as the mayor said, you cannot let people who are sick, no matter where they come from, no matter what their status, go uncovered. You can't do that. It's just going to be taken care of, period. You have to. It's a humane thing to do. But here's the deal. The deal is that he's right about three things. Number one, they, in fact, contribute to the well-being of the country, but they also, for example, they've increased the lifespan of Social Security because they're, they have a job, they're paying a Social Security tax. That's what they're doing. It's increased the lifespan. They would do the same thing in terms of reducing the overall cost of health care by them being able to be treated and not wait till they're an extremist. And on cue, President Trump tweeted, all Democrats just raised their hands for giving millions of illegal aliens unlimited health care. How about taking care of American citizens first? That's the end of the race. Well, <clears throat> we may be killing Hamlet in the first act, Donald. Well, seven months until the first election, John Heilman. I'm curious, though, we, we could talk about that specific exchange, but I want to get your overall take on what you saw last night. Well, I think a lot of your comments are, are on point, Joe. I think the chaos on stage was not a was a, not a good look, um, and I think a lot of the candidates in this in this debate watched the night before and mm. and, and took various lessons. First of all, they talked yeah. a lot more about Donald Trump than the ones did on the first night of the stage. Apparently, they heard you and us yesterday morning saying, "Wow, it's weird they're not talking about Trump." A lot of talk about Trump last night, which, by the way, was a good thing. Yes, it should. Yeah, a po positive thing. I think that's. Uh, but you heard a lot about Donald Trump. Uh, you saw candidates who thought, who realized that that there was, they wanted to, the, the impetus was on them to interrupt if they wanted to get their points in. So the interruption quotient was up very high. And I think that moment that Kamala Harris had in the first part of the debate, what started the, the train rolling for her very good night was that very relatable moment where she said, you know, what Americans don't want is a food right. fight. They want to hear about how we put food on the table. Right. That was the moment where you said, okay, she came to play. And she then, I thought, throughout the debate, had the most dominant performance of any of the candidates over two nights in the sense that she did more, I think, to help her prospects to become a Democratic nominee than anybody either night. Elizabeth Warren, as we said yesterday, yeah. had a very good first night. I think she, there was not a single answer that Kamala Harris did last night, gave last night, where she was not locked in and right. making an argument that was helping her in some way. I think to Adrian's point, her, if there's a log line of her candidacy, it's the log line of, I'm the prosecutor who can prosecute the case against Donald Trump. She showed last night all those prosecutorial skills and in a weird way made Joe Biden the kind of stand in for Donald Trump. If you want to imagine what it would be like to see me on stage with another septuagenarian white man, right. watch me now. Yeah. And th I think the, 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 risk, the risk for her, and I agree with you, I think Joe Biden's performance was, was d disconcerting, was poor, and I think the pressure is going to be on him to an extraordinary degree in the second debate to do better. But the, the reality was that in that moment, you could kind of see what she would look like. And you heard all the conversation among Democrats was, having watched that debate was, 
I can't wait to see her go on stage against Donald Trump. And that's the ultimate win for yeah. Kamala Harris is to plant in Democratic voters' minds the right. notion yes. that she would be awesome on stage against that president. That's well, right. and, and Willie, last night. <laughs> Agreed. Last night, to that point, uh, it was a huge win for Kamala Harris because she had been stuck around 7, 8%. Yep. You know, she had the great kickoff and then saw a lot of people go past her, and she was sort of stuck at 7, 8%. Elizabeth Warren went past her, Mayor Pete went past her. She needed last night to happen. But it was, a, it was complete domination. And it's interesting, over these two nights, uh, after we've been looking at polls showing two old white men in first place, the winner of both nights were women. Yes. Yeah. Women senators, that, uh, Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris. That's one yeah. of the big stories of the night. When those polls came out earlier in the week. We said, man, this race has really been sort of set in concrete for a while with Joe yeah. Biden about 20 points up. <laughs> Something's got to give. Well, last night something gave, and it was Kamala Harris who came in. We knew that she was probably going to be the one who could stand on the stage and go at Joe Biden because somebody had to to change yep. the dynamic of the race. She went in with a calculated idea. She executed it extraordinarily well. She got in his face in a way that was actually respectful and said, I don't think you're a racist, but here's why I think you're wrong for these things you've done in the past. And if anybody moves up, it's going to be her. I yeah. thought Mayor Pete had a good night. Yes, we he had a very thoughtful about answer and about what happened, what's going on in South Bend, but Kamala Harris was the runaway well, winner and, last night. And I will say this, that usually campaigns are about contrast. Mm -hmm. If you have somebody like Donald Trump, loud, and people would say verbally abusive, what you want is a contrast to that. And if you want that contrast, then you get that in the form of Mayor Pete, who actually, unlike just about everybody else on the stage, kept his cool, his yep. temperament, he had he, first, first rate temperament, yep. uh, and uh, carried himself off very well, even handled the South Bend question well. Well, I think women are emerging in these debates and in this political moment in a whole new way, and it's very exciting yeah. to watch. Yeah. Still ahead on Morning Joe, jam-packed show this morning. We're going to be speaking with four Democratic contenders who took the stage last night and one who did not. Mayor Pete Buttigieg, Senator Kamala Harris will be our guest. We'll also be joined by Senator Kirsten Gillibrand and Michael Bennett and Montana Governor Steve Bullock will also be our guest this morning. Plus, overnight, President Trump met with Russian President Vladimir Putin and joked about meddling in the 2020 election. Serious. We'll get a live report from Osaka. You're welcome. Right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.